Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about Campylobacter jejuni. We'll mention all the important notes that you'll have to know for your step 1 exam. To remember the transmission routes of Campylobacter jejuni, I remember the word camping. In camping, we make contact with animals, and we usually cook meat, and there is a hard chance of fecal oral root transmission. Campylobacter uses polar flagella to move, and it can survive in very high temperatures up to 42 degrees Celsius. Under the microscope, we'll see corkscrew mutility, and this is the best variety that I could find. The main symptom of Campylobacter infection is bloody diarrhea, and it's very important to know that Campylobacter infection usually precedes reactive arthritis and Guillain Barre syndrome. Meaning, if somebody came in with reactive arthritis or Guillain Barre syndrome, look in the history and you might find bloody diarrhea, which could indicate Campylobacter infection. Campylobacter is oxidase positive, and for your step 1 exam, there are only four oxidase positive organisms that you'll have to know. Campylobacter, which is S shape or comma shape, with flagella at the polar end. Cholera can cause water or rice diarrhea and can grow on alkaline agar. H. pylori is urease positive and it's infamous for causing urinary stones. And Pseudomonas is rod shape. Meaning if you ever get a scenario in the exam and it says oxidase positive organism, it's going to be one of those four. To treat Campylobacter, we use fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin. And if it's resistant, we use erythromycin. And here's a small quiz. So which of the following organisms can also cause bloody diarrhea? And here is the answer. Alright guys, that's everything I've got. Hopefully I made this easier for you. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you guys later.